Hey everyone, this is Vegetarian Zombie. I want to welcome you back to my Intro to Twine series. In this episode, I'm going to be covering HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. More specifically, not so much in Twine, but within working within Harlow. There's a few limitations you have when working with, with these technologies in Harlow, and I'm going to briefly cover them. Now, here's the thing. I'm not going to be covering them as technologies themselves, you can actually create an entire course on HTML, JavaScript, and CSS alone. In fact, if you don't know either of those, then I highly suggest you check out the Khan Academy. This is a website that offers a lot of free training, a lot of tutorials, and they offer them offer offer classes on HTML, JavaScript, and CSS all for free that you can take, and you'll have tests, and you'll start to really learn how they work. Now, if you're interested in my own, for me to create my own series on them, just let me know. Uh, just leave a note in the comments, and I could possibly create a series on, say, HTML for Twine developers or JavaScript for Twine developers. But in any case, we're just going to move forward. So when we last left off, this is the story we were working on. This is Derelict, uh, a space station that is no longer working, and you have to escape. And let's just start it up. You can see we started up. We have just a simple white background with our text on it. Now, for the most part, a lot of people will will go through these and be interested in play your games and so forth. But at, for a presentation level, it's very minimal. And Twine isn't just text. It's also, Twine is also interactivity and presentation. You want to present your story in a way that's visually pleasing to the reader so that you can keep them going on so that they can, you know, we'll, we'll go through your story. So let's go back to here in Derelict. And I'm going to go home and I'm going to open up my cold storage story. This is one I've been working on for some time. And we'll just play this. And I think I might have showed you some of this in an earlier video. But here you can see now I have this background image. I have now, we have a different font going on here. You can see that, and then I have this outline around my passages that is nice, has a nice little rounded rect here, rounded corners, and the background isn't necessarily 100% clear, but it's there's actually a black backing with some opacity showing through. And as we go through, you can see there's no redo or undo. So once you make your choice in this game, you make your choice. There's no way you can get back. Well, I believe, well, I th yeah, so... You can move like so, and then we have this title screen, and then when you move forward into the story, the background will change based on where you are in the story. And it gets very simple, very basic, but again, it's another way to visually hook the reader on and to keep it going through the story. Now, I highly suggest you, ch you check out other Twine stories, especially check out for, uh, from uh, the stories from a Twine author named Porpentine. She creates a lot of crazy stories and she has a whole lot of fun with the html javascript and css it makes the stories not just reading the stories fun but there's also a lot of interactivity around them so again she's a great example of really really using these technologies to push her stories into new places so we're just going to come back we'll close this down and we'll close this down so let's go back to derelict. So the first thing you may want to work with is HTML. And HTML is actually very simple to use within a Twine store. You just start writing your HTML. So in this case, I could just write, say, HR like that if I wanted to create a line. And now if I just start my story, it's going to parse it. And you can see I get this line running across like so. I can also add other things. Say I want to add maybe in h3 i can say make a pick like so and twine will then again it will parse that correctly so you can use a lot of formatting within html i tend to use the bare minimum and i like to handle css i let css to do all my formatting for me for me but you can do that however you know whatever works best for your flow now harlow has its own formatting tags that you can check into in the documentation and you can see them um, 
I basically, it's at the very top, and it'll basically give you a quick walkthrough about how to bold and how to italicize and so forth. Again, I prefer to default to HTML when doing anything with formatting, and then defaulting to CSS. So let's actually now move into talking about CSS itself. So in this story here, we're going to play this. You can see here we have these undo and reduce. So how do we get rid of these? I mean, they're useful in some ways, but in a lot of ways, just say you want your user, let's say they open up the airlock, they died. Well, they can just keep on going back and they're like, well, no, I didn't. So you don't want them to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to target this in CSS. The way we do that is we come down here into Derelict and we should click, click this button here and you can see we have Edit Story Style Sheet. So we're going to select here and this is where we can now really target those things. So what we can do is how we can find these is I'm right now using a Mac and I'm using Chrome. I prefer to use Chrome to do all my web development work in. I've started recently using Safari's development tools and they're good. I'm just used to Chrome at this point. So I'm doing Alt Command and or this is Option Command I. I'm not too sure what the window equivalent is but you can see here, I open up this development toolbar. And this is great when doing any web development work. This will help you a lot. This is, allows you to inspect the page. You can make changes. You can make live changes to the page. You can tweak things around to make sure, make, make sure they look okay. And this is what I use for a lot of the professional web development that I do. So here is this is this is a, a magnifying class. I'm going to click that and I'm just going to move over up to this. And you can see how it selects it for me, these elements here. So I'm going to select that. And you can see it opens up. This opens up the HTML, the page for me. And you can see that we're working within a special twine script here. And I see that there's these elements called TW hyphen icon. And then we have undo and redo. And these both have classes associated with them. A class basically is just a collection of CSS rules that we are applying to a certain element on the page. So what I want to do is I want to target these two classes to make sure they disappear. Well, I can do this right now. So you can see we have this undo right here. And I can go down here and I can see all the styles that are being applied to this. So what I can do is in this element style right here, I can just type display like so. And then I'm going to hit tab. And I'm just going to type none. And that's it. And you can see now this undo is gone. The redo is still here. So we can do the same for the redo. Display none like that. And you can see that goes away as well. Well, this actually, the next time I come to this, it's going to reappear. That, that, those changes only affect that session. So we'll start this back up and you can see they're, re, re, they're here again. So I want to make this a permanent change. So I'm going to go to my style sheet. I'm going to choose edit story style sheet and I'm going to target these classes. I'm going to do redo. And now I'm just going to put display none. I got to have these braces here because these are a collection of rules. Display is the rule colon and none is the value I'm applying to it. I'm going to do the same for undo like so. And now I'll play. And now every time my story starts, those undo and redos are gone. Pretty easy. So what if you want to actually target, say, certain passages based on where they are in the story? So right now I'm in the living quarters and I want, say I want the living quarters, this text to be read because they're in the living quarters. Well, this is where it gets a little difficult. Harlow has its own way of doing things, and it prefers you to default to them. And what Harlow doesn't do is it doesn't give you a lot of information about where the player is in the story at a given time. You have to add that functionality. And unfortunately, it's not exactly easy. You have to do this by using JavaScript. Okay, if you don't know anything about JavaScript, just keep in mind it's a scripting language that is used throughout all the web and it's very powerful and very once you very easy to start working in now a lot of people get it confused with the java programming language and javascript has nothing to do with java so just keep that in mind if you, anyone says javascript you're working on the web if anyone says java 
you're working on a programming language. Java is what people is what Minecraft is created in. It's what a lot of servers run. A lot of websites run Java in the back end to process results coming in from the server and so forth. JavaScript is used when working on web pages. Okay. So we want to use we're going to use JavaScript to so that we can know where this what state the story is in. So I'm going to come here and I'm just going to choose under derelict here. I'm going to choose edit story JavaScript. And this is where I can add my JavaScript that will run. And whatever JavaScript I put in here, it will run the first time the story is the first time the story is run. Now, again, this is where it gets a little bit dicey. Harlow is very particular about certain JavaScript. Some JavaScript will will work in Harlow. Others will not. Your mileage will vary. If you're doing anything that requires a lot of heavy JavaScripting, I highly suggest you use another story format because Harlow isn't designed for it. So we're just going to add this little, we're going to add a little bit of, of JavaScript in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type it all out and then I'll walk you through it. Okay, let's let me walk you through this little bit of JavaScript here. The very first thing it does is this is called an if check. Now you've done if statements in Twine. It's just done a little bit different. We're we're evaluating something, we're evaluating a condition whether it's true or false. So right now I'm evaluating a condition if a certain variable named derelict exists. This is just like Twine. Twine, we remember we have um, we have our variables with a dollar sign in them. In JavaScript, you don't need the dollar sign. In this case, I'm putting a capital D here. So I'm putting derelict. This is an object. This is a utility object that I'm creating. Now, if type of derelict is undefined, then I want it to go into this block here. I want this block to run. If it has already been defined, then I don't want to do anything else. So now next, I'm creating a, this variable called derelict. All variables in JavaScript are defined using the var keyword. So you're putting var derelict. And now I'm, this brace here indicates a JavaScript object. I'm creating a method, a function in this JavaScript object called change class. So whenever I want to change the class of something, I'm going to call this function. This function can do whatever I want it to do, but it's only going to do one thing. So it takes this, fu this keyword function and it's passing in this next variable called HTML class. And this is whatever the user passes in. And now I'm calling this, I'm using this third party library called jQuery. So this is called jQuery. I'm finding the HTML root element and I'm adding that class to it. And that's it. And then once I have this all set up down here, I'm accessing this window object. I'm up applying, I'm creating this derelict to it, and I'm applying this variable to it. Now this, if again, if you're very, if you're new to JavaScript and you're new to scripting, this is going to be a lot. This is drinking from the fire hose, and there's a lot of concepts that you really need to understand before you can get into scripting something like this. Again, if you're interested, I can come up for a series specifically on teaching JavaScript to Twine developers or, or teaching Java, JavaScript to to someone new to programming. Again, I highly suggest you check out the Khan Academy because they will walk you through all of this step by step. So there we go. We have this little JavaScript all set up. Now we have to call it. The way we can call it is by using a hack. And this is a hack I found within the actual, within the actual Twine forums. And you can see here, I already put it in place we have a display equals none here, like so. We're using something called a div. And a div is just a block level element that you can use to organize content in your HTML pages. It doesn't really stand for anything. It's whatever you want it to be. So in this case, I have a div. I put a style as display none, and this is so it's not, it won't show to the user. Next, I have this image. And this image has this 
stuff here. So what does this mean? Well, I just take it to mean basically uh, nothing. This is sort of like a curse word, like, ah, this is the only way I can get, this is the only way I can call this script. So I'm really mad about that. So you can put whatever it is. You're not going to put in a valid image. And then we have this on error attribute. So since it can't find the image, it's going to run this attribute and it's going to call derelict change class living quarters. It's going to call this function that we just defined here and then it's going to pass in living quarters to it. Okay, and this is how that, it's very, it's very simple, but it's also, if you don't know this stuff, it can be a little bit, a little bit advanced as well. So let's just run this, and we'll open your eyes, we'll roll out of bed. Okay, so nothing changed. So let's hit Option, Command, I. And you can see, if we come down here, we'll look at HTML, and you can see right here, we have class equals living quarters. Okay, so now we've assigned the class living quarters here. Now we can target this in CSS. And the way I can do that is I can come down here, derelict, I'm going to open up store the style sheet. And down here, I'm going to put living quarters. And then what I'll do is put TW passage. And we'll just say the color is red. Now, how, do I, how did I know that this is TW passage? Well, if I come down here, I turn on my inspector, I come in here and select this, you can see this TW passage is highlighted. So what I'm doing is I'm targeting everything within TW passage here. So I'm saying I want everything to be red. Now, these won't be red since these have greater specifications, greater rules associated with them. Again, that's something you learn when you start learning CSS. But this should work fine. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run this and we're going to go into the living quarters and you can see now everything is red. And there is a side effect to this. You can see now that this is red too. And the reason is because the class is still associated with living quarters. So I would have to, if I wanted to change this, I would have to, to call that hack again. I, this, And that's, this is basically what this is. This is a hack so that we can run JavaScript in Harlow. You'd have to call, you'd have to copy this and say post paste it into the hallway. And let's paste it right here. And so that we don't see this. And we'll call this hallway. And in this case, we're going to make the hallway green. So we can come in here, enter the style sheet. We'll do like this hallway. Color equals green. And now let's play this. So here we'll open our eyes, roll out of bed. You can see now we're green. Let's go into, I mean, we're red. Let's go into the hallway. And now we're green here. So again, it's a little bit, it takes a little bit of knowledge to learn to really start using this. And again, it's going to take some, if you don't know these technologies, it's going to take some investment on your side to really get up and running with them. But once you really do start learning these things, you're going to have a lot of fun and your stories are going to be very dynamic and interactive to match.